warriors converse with holy men, twig by string by stem, the sparrows labor over their nest. As they twitter to each other, our hearts enter into their conversation. With the same spirit of faith we therefore speak. 2100 Jackson Street Hope Street was paved with gold. Only it didn't have any busy intersections, cars, trams, trains, tracks and all the little gizmos that are powered by petrol, diesel and electricity. No cops could be seen walking foot patrol. No kids with skates, scooters and bikes. No wild bunch on dirt bikes, no street hockey and no homes with prams and babies sucking on pacifiers. This was a world of celestial beings, angels who flew instead of walking but who would connect with the ground just as easily. All was well and every creature was a stirring. This world had kings, three in fact, who rose from a throne that was designed to sit free. From this throne orders and ordinances went throughout the land. Every angel was expected to perform his duties without supervision. This was a world where supervisors and floor managers would be jobless and still the company would continue posting profits on quarterly basis. There was however a more supreme celestial being among the company and he was in charge of them all. His name was Lucifer, and this dude was a pretty boy, too pretty for his own good, but he dispensed his work with excellence. Still he never stopped daydreaming about establishing his own company and ruling his own kingdom on a higher elevation than the present kingdom. Now such ambitions were just not forthright seeing that this dude was only one of creation and not creator himself. But there was no telling this one. Sometimes it's easier to hold a conversation with oneself but this dude was kind of determined to make his plan succeed. No plan of this magnitude can work without accomplices. So Pretty Boy began making rounds among the company, stirring up conversation if not trouble and heated debate of not an opinion poll. The subject, kingdom business, who can run this company better, dot these three business xx issuing out decrees and orders from a chair or a guy like me with all the street smarts. By the way, the polls are open 24-7 and we don't shut down because it's Friday. So rumors began spreading all over Hope Street that a takeout bid was in the offer. This was no takeout as in corporate takeout but rather takeout as in takeout all you can and set up shop somewhere else takeout. The three xx were not worried about such a takeout plan. No other airspace could ever exist parallel to theirs. Pretty boy can talk all he wants and in the end common sense will prevail. Bit they underestimated the power of free speech. Pretty boy was running the numbers quite amazingly. A wise man once said that not everything is about numbers, yet this dude was doing his own Dennis the Menace number rather than doing his day job. The XX let this game play itself out. One could go a long time without a proper chess game. Besides, it could be fun. When the polls came to a close, Pretty Boy had garnered one third of all the votes cast. This was not impressive considering the ad campaigns that went out and all the media spin off. Still, it was a worrying conclusion. These dudes were not going to go down without a fight in their hands. A board meeting was organized and the boys from the newly formed 182 met with the excess to straighten out this impasse. When nothing came out of it, it became clear what was to be the alternative. There would be nothing short of a company takeover or the 182 would stage a walkout and set up shop somewhere else. But the numbers told them otherwise. A 3 to 1 standoff was not something to be lightly ignored. So protests began on the street. Rallies were held every day and chants from the 182 could be heard, get kneel out, bonfires were lit on every nook and cranny and night vigils were held. Soon violent altercations began to spread. What started as a demonstration quickly became a stick it to the man campaign. The National Guard was brought in to deal with these demonstrators. All manner of tactics were employed on both sides. Soon the G-men were able to subdue the rioters. When the fracas was over, the XX issued an executive order that saw the boys from the 182 banished from the kingdom. The celestial beings went into panic mode. Dot after all these boys were former comrades. But they had to get back to work. The decision was final and no amount of bargaining on their behalf could make a difference. Hope Street was in chaos and business needed to return to normal. Dot after a concerted mop-up operation, everything went back to original state. The local 182 started looking for a permanent place to set up shop. 
Their scouting quickly brought them to another world three doors down from their previous place. This joint was not as flashy as Hope Street. The dudes living in this place did not fly like they did. They did something second grade like touching the ground. Only it was not paved with gold but dirt. Jackson Street was the place, chubby but cheap. Not such a bad place to set up shop. No XX telling us what to do. We could own this joint. So the local 182 began formulating a plan that would see their company establish roots in this place. But to their surprise, they found it already under the ownership of Creator. Their handiwork was all over the place. These dudes don't play fair, do they? How is it that every joint we set to take out already bears their hand? Ha, huh, we have to tear down this joint and put up a parking garage for our durable goods division. First on the menu, rules have to change around this place. These goody two shoes have to see things our way or the highway. Wait a minute, no need to run altercation with these people. Our plan worked once and look where it got us. Why not use subtle tactics and win these dudes over? They're not all that smart. Piece of gum and screwdriver dismantle this crew, yeah. We had a rumor about a tree in the middle of this Jackson place. Dudes working this joint say it's off limits. Something to do with the end of the world and stuff. Fellas avoid it like the plague. They say it's cursed and all. One bite, oops, you're dead. Never heard such silliness in all my life, pretty boy told himself. I guess they only recruit the dumb ones sir, a dude from the 182 added dot two other dudes from the 182, little Mikey and Johnny Two Toes, were sent ahead to meet with the leaders of this mishap. There was no military swagger in their step. They were just a couple of wise guys minding their own business, or rather 182 business dot the dudes running this joint noticed the two coming their way and asked each other who these cats were. Little Mikey and Johnny Tuto saw they had company and decided to act all business-like. We heard that you guys were unloading stuff without the assistance of bona fide union labor, say it ain't so. We don't see any boys from the 182 around these here parts. What's your story, Doc? One dude asked, Doc, we never heard of the 182. We don't need your kind around. Now beat it. This is going to be a little bit tricky, Mikey thought to himself. Off the two went to give their report. What's the status? What did you find out? These dudes were not impressed with our 182 rap. Say they ain't never heard of us, told us to scram. That tree they keep avoiding, the one they say will bring the world to an end. Rubbish, we've got to get them start snooping around that tree. Dot got to get them skylarking at their day jobs. If we can't beat them, they can join us. It will be like having extra manpower, a sort of unskilled labor force. How about if we run an ad campaign? Eat this and live. Be all you can be. Out with the creator. That ought to do it. Sure thing boss. Posters and flyers began circulating Jackson Street. Folks began getting wind of the latest buzz. What a spin of it was, violated every code in the book and dudes just went right for the bait. Finally a chick named Eve got the guts to try out this thing, and with a little help from Pretty Boy, all the slogans began playing in her mind. Before long she was biting through the thing. Saw it was good for food, like she didn't already have enough. Who cares, this stuff rocks dude. Did you say it would make me like creator? Minor details. She couldn't wait to tell hubby Adam what she felt inside. Felt like a new woman, dope, Adam was a bit of a skeptic. Wise man, didn't believe the hype. Tried reasoning with the girl that this wasn't right. Dot she quite the subtle tactics, claimed Adam didn't care, called the once over on the boy. Who could resist? Adam took one bite of the thing. It was like a sprite at meets Kodak. Poor fellows spread the word like wildfire. Dot before long the 182 boys were singing the cowboy blues. Pretty boy had Jackson Street right where he wanted it. These folks had literally become his hired hands. The 182 was handed over the keys to the management office. The durable goods division became established that day. From then on things were going their way. 
Folks stopped listening to Creator and signed up with the 182. It was world domination from then on, all in the name of the 182. Folks did what they wanted and felt nothing. Seared consciousness is what they were. So after Chaos and Bedlam had ruled the streets of the Greater Jackson area, the execs decided to make another executive order. They decided to drown the place. Wipe out everyone from the place. Still not everyone was high on coke and rum. One dude named Noah was given a tasking order, make a boat big enough to carry a bunch of zoo animals and your crew dot for 120 years this enterprise went on. All the guys ridiculed the dude. The local press scandalized him all over the dailies. City hall officials called the dude a joke on national television dot there was no reasoning with him. This dude's got into this boat making thing bad. If he wants to make a fool of himself, who are we to stop him? It was madrigal everywhere. Folks got hitched on a daily basis. One day this boat was finished and Noah packed the thing full of animals and all the food they could carry, plus of course themselves. Once inside the boat, the door was sealed from the outside. Only this dude and his crew had the access codes. No one wanting to get in would be able to. Rain like it had never been seen fell triggering an end of the world thing like it had been promised back in Jackson. The place got remodeled in a heartbeat. Nothing that had breathed creators there survived. After a long time, the boat settled on top of a mountain. Creation began anew from that day. But the damage had already been done. When Noah stepped out of the boat, the ideals of the 182 followed him and his descendants. Folks soon forgot that they had been given a new lease on life by creator and so it was back to basics. Like the album dot it was a trip. Durable goods division stores opened on every street corner and parking garages came up. This went on until one of the XX decided it was time to bring the bad boy home once and for all dot it was time to meet the boys from the 182 head on and put a stop to business unusual. Or was it business as usual? A complication in defining terms. Anyhow, the exec entered the realm of the 182 and stirred up a hornet's nest from within. Soon, men began to see the light of day but all the 182 wanted was a one continuous eclipse. Light and darkness did their thing until even the folks got tired of this dude. So they conspired to do him in only to continue 182 business. A bunch of soldiers who had invented a torture contraption decided to side with these dudes and put the exec to death. The dudes said, 0k. Do your thing and he agreed to the long delayed execution. Only the dude was not of this world and neither was his kingdom. After a three day delay, the dude gave death the matching orders. News of his resurrection spread like wildfire and the 182 free. They became frantic and went to work spinning this thing as a gimmick, the work of subversives, who broke into his grave and stole the body at night. Nothing to it. But it's hard to stake down a wolf. This dude had already gained popularity before his execution. Now it was only reasonable to believe that the 182 had at last met their match. Light had done its thing even though men could not understand it. So men chose to continue doing 182 business instead of coming to the light and exposing their deeds. But a new breed of dudes had emerged by this time. Dudes that wanted nothing to do with the local 182 fellows. They began their own which soon spread through the known world. The 182 had just had it. They began sending guys after these dudes were all manner of threats. They put them in jail, stoned them, lit them up like Roman candles, set lions on them for sport. The chief 182 guy named Saul did all he could to stem the tide. But soon he too fell under the power of its influence and became its chief protagonist. But the hearts of men were still corrupted. So to this day the dudes from the 182 and the dudes from the light armor squad still go at each other. The exec left us with these words as last instructions before leaving earth, he who endures to the end will receive a crown of life.